Hello everyone, I am George Tsopardi from University of Groningen in the Netherlands. This presentation was given at a conference in Sevilla, Spain in August 2011. The conference is called KAIP, which stands for Computer Analysis of Images and Patterns. I will be presenting our paper, namely Detection of Retinal Vascular Bifurcations by Trainable Filters. I conducted this work with my PhD promoter, Professor Nikolai Petkov. Basically, in this presentation, I will show an approach that contributes to a solution in a medical imaging application. The application at hand deals with retinal fundus images, which mainly concerns the field of ophthalmology in the medicine community. I will be showing how the trainable filters that we are proposing can be effectively used to automate an important process in this application. The figure on the left shows a typical image of a retina, and next to it is the binary segmentation of the same retina. As you can see, the vessel structure in the retina looks like a tree with several branches, and it is known that the spatial arrangement of these so-called vascular bifurcations may reveal signs of some cardiovascular diseases, such as high blood pressure and atherosclerosis. In this research area, there are already exist state-of-the-art methods that segment the original image into a binarized vessel tree. However, no state-of-the-art methods exist to detect the vascular bifurcations. So, such a process typically involves an ophthalmologist to mark all the vascular bifurcations by hand. As you can imagine, this is a very tedious and expensive approach. So, the aim of our work is to automate the detection of such features, which is an important task before pro proceeding with further analysis. The figure on the right shows the ground truth of all vascular bifurcations in this retinal image, which consists of 107 bifurcations. The way we approach this problem is by configuring detectors that are selected for vascular bifurcations. The configuration of such a detector first requires a user to specify a typical bifurcation, such as this one. In the, in the coming slides, I will be showing a step-by-step -step illustration of the automatic configuration process of such a bifurcation detector, which will consequently be selected for the specified pattern and other similar patterns. As a brief overview, the main idea is, is to learn the contour structure of a given contour pattern. This is achieved by extracting information about the dominant orientations, which in this case are illustrated by the red ellipses and also extracting their relative position with respect to each other. Every dominant orientation is modeled by what we call a subunit. We then compute the response of the filter by multiplying the responses of all the subunits. In the coming slides, I will explain how such subunits are configured and applied on input images. For the configuration, we apply a bank of nine detectors. In our case, we use a bank of symmetric gobble filters with eight orientations and five different scales. However, in practice, one can use other filters, such as derivatives of Gaussians. In this slide, I am showing only the three symmetric double curves that are selected for the appropriate orientations of the given pattern. And the three images below are the corresponding responses of the, of the three double filters. We then superimpose the responses that are achieved on the bank of double filters and consider only those responses along a circle of a given radius, as illustrated by, by the red circle. On the left I am showing a plot of the maximum responses along this circle that is illustrated on the right hand side. From such a plot we choose the local maxima points over a defined neighborhood. In this case there are three dominant points that correspond to the three arms of the given pattern. Every point characterizes the area of support of a subunit. We model the area of support of the subunit by a two-dimensional Gaussian function in order to provide some tolerance in the position of the corresponding line segment. For instance, if the line segment is slightly displaced around the optimal position, the subunit will still achieve a response but lower than the optimal response. This image on the right shows the properties of the three configured subunits. The properties include the position in polar coordinates with respect to the center of mass, and the corresponding orientation and scale selectivity, which is illustrated by the yellow ellipses. For instance, this subunit over here is selected for a horizontal line segment to the right from the center of mass, 
the center of mass is also considered to be the center of the filter. This slide concludes the automatic configuration process of a bifurcation detector. In the coming slides, I will be showing a step-by-step -step illustration of the computation of the subunit responses. And subsequently, I will also be showing how we compute the response of the filter. In the coming slides, I will be showing how we compute the response of the subunit. Let us consider the same pattern that is shown over here as the input image. We should, we should be able to detect exactly the point that was specified by the user. For instance, subunit 1 is selected for vertical orientations at this location with respect to the center of the filter. First, we apply the corresponding Gabor filter that is selected for vertical orientations and we achieve this response image. Now let's say we want to compute the response at the position shown by the red circle. We weight the Gabor responses with the Gaussian coefficients that model the area of support of this subunit and obtain this result. The subunit response is the maximum value from all these pixels which result in this result image. The response is then shifted in the direction of the arrow, where its length and orientation are the polar coordinates that were determined during the configuration phase. This is then the final subunit response. In practice, we compute the responses at every location in the input image, and we achieve this result for, for subunit 1. We repeat the same procedure for subunit 2, which is responsible for diagonal line segments, and also for subunit 3, which is selected for horizontal line segments at this relative position with respect to the center of the filter. These images are the responses of the three subunits. The filter response is then defined as the geometric mean, which involves the element-wise multiplication of all subunit responses, and then we take the nth root of the result, where n is the number of subunits. In this case, this operation results in the image shown at the bottom of the slide. From this result image, we choose the point with maximum value, and which correctly matches the point that was specified by the user. In practice, the input image is a retinal image, which consists of multiple such features. In that case, the detective features are the local maxima from the responses of the filter. We demonstrate the effectiveness of such filters by applying them on the public dataset Drive, that consists of 40 binary images. Here I am showing three such images from, from this dataset. In the previous slides, I showed the configuration of a bifurcation detector by considering a single circuit around the specified point of interest. However, in practice, there are no restrictions on the number of circuits used, and in our experiments, we configure subunits along two circuits, and also on the specified point of interest. This image on the right shows the configured subunits for this pattern, where we have three subunits along the outer, outer circle, another three subunits along the inner circle, and the subunit at the center of the filter. The standard deviation of the Gaussian functions is linearly proportional with the distance from the center of the filter. When we apply the filter on this image, we manage to detect six similar bifurcations, including the one that was used to configure this filter, which is shown over here, that corresponds to the pattern in this image. In our paper, we also show that these filters can be easily applied in rotation invariant mode. This is achieved by the manipulation of some parameter values, rather than by configuring new filters for rotated versions of the same pattern. Applying the same filter in a rotation invariant mode, we manage to detect 38 out of 107 bifurcations. This is quite a good result, however, it is not enough as there are still several features that are not detected. So what we do is we choose a feature that was not detected, such as this one over here, which is shown enlarged on the right hand side, and configure a new filter 
based on this new pattern as shown as shown here. Applying the new filter we are able to detect 14 new bifurcations and when we combine the results the two filters detect more than half of the bifurcations. To be precise they, they detect 62 distinct features out of the 107 bifurcations. In a, in a training phase we repeat this process of configuring two filters until we are satisfied with the achieved results. For this image it turned out that with 10 filters that are configured from these 10 features we managed to detect all the bifurcations in this retinal image. Such a result is achieved with zero false positives. That is, all detected features are correct. We apply the same 10 filters on the entire data set of 40 images. In our experiments we evaluate the performance of these filters by thresholding the responses by a given fraction of the maximum. We repeat the same experiments for 11 times by varying the threshold between a fraction of 0.2 and 0.3 with intervals of 0.01. And for each experiment, we quantify the results in terms of recall and precision rates. The triangles in this plot illustrate the results achieved with different thresholds, starting from a fraction of 0.2 at the bottom, up to a fraction of 0.3 at the top of the plot. From such results, we choose the one which is closest to the upper right corner. In practice, this is achieved by selecting the point that has the maximum harmonic mean of precision and recall. In this case, we achieve a recall rate of 97% and a precision rate of 95%. We carry out further experiments by configuring up to 40 filters, and we found that the best results are obtained with only 25 filters, where we achieve a recall rate of 98.5% and a precision rate of 95.2%. Considering that typically retinal images contain around 100 bifurcations. Such results mean that on average we only miss 1 to 2 bifurcations and incorrectly detect 4 to 5 features. To sum up the presentation, the first conclusion is that the proposed filters are highly effective detectors and that the results obtained are sufficient for the needs of the medical application attempt. The other important conclusion is that the proposed filters are versatile. This means that they can be used either as point detectors, as shown in this application, or else they can be applied for classification tasks. For instance, in a separate paper, we showed how the activity of multiple detectors can be used as a feature descriptor for handwritten digits, where we achieved a high recognition rate of 99.26% on the popular MNIST dataset. This result is comparable to the best approaches in this long-lasting research field. Other possible applications include the geometric camera calibration, the recognition of handwritten signatures, traffic signs, architectural symbols, and other applications where shape is of major importance. One comment that I would like to add is that the configuration process of the proposed trainable filters is inspired by the properties of shape-selective neurons in area V4 of visual cortex that are known to be selective for moderate complex stimuli such as convex and concave curvatures. Thank you very much for your attention. Should you have any questions or comments, please send me an email on the address shown below.